Hey guys, Chris with Palometry. This is part two of my cross corner bank shot system. If you missed the first video, I covered this stuff here on the left, and in this video, I'm gonna do this stuff on the right. So let's get started. In video one, I demonstrated the speed window, but what if you wanted to widen the window of a full ball hit, still without cutting the ball? Well, I'm gonna teach you the magic rule of English, and that is a half a tip of English is a half a diamond of cheating on the rail. What do I mean by that? Well, if I'm at diamond three and my medium speed is 1.3, if I cheat a half a diamond towards the pocket, one, two, three, four, five, I end up at 0.8. Now just for a quick review, if you remember from my three in the side video, this actually is a predictable bank shot to the side pocket. However, let's say for example, that's not what you wanted to shoot. Let's say you wanted to shoot this cross corner. Well, we are predictably a half a diamond from our medium speed line. So I'm gonna add a half a tip of English and you gotta know which way to cheat. If you're up the rail, right, if you're towards the pocket, you need to add inside English so that you produce hold up English on the object ball. So you're gonna mentally mark where the edge of the tip of the cue is gonna hit the ball and you're gonna make that the center of your aiming point. So I'm gonna slide over, half a tip, medium speed. Now we can actually cheat in the opposite direction by half a diamond as well using half a tip of outside English. So that brings us from 1.3 to 1.8. 1 uh, so I'm going to line up here. I'm still from my third diamond. I'm off of my line by half a diamond. So I'm going to add half a tip. Again, sighting the edge of the tip on the ball and making that the center of my aim. What's really cool is the half tip adjustment works all over the table. So for example, if I was at 10 through 5.2, that's my medium speed line, but if I cheated this way and I was actually on a dead ball line, half a diamond up 4.7, I could add inside English one half of a tip for that half table adjustment and voila. And I can go the other way. 5.2 by half a tip brings me to 5.7. I'm gonna add half a tip of outside English to compensate for being off by half a diamond. This also works when layered with the various speed adjustments. So for example, from five through 2.2, this is medium speed. If I adjust by 0.9 in this direction, that's 1.9, that's my fast speed line. And if I'm off my fast speed line by 0.5, half a diamond, I can do fast speed with half a tip of English. Now be careful, when you notice this line, you tend to get excited and I actually shoot a little too hard. But fast speed is not a full power shot, it's about 75% power. So 75% power with half a tip of English Put it together. And we can go the other way with slow speed. So for example, five through 2.2, my slow speed adjustment is 2.5. Half a diamond off of that in this direction is three. I can shoot slow speed with half a tip of English to correct for being off of this line. If we layer our speed adjustments with our English adjustments, we end up with nine predictable lines of aim from one diamond. If I start at my medium speed, that's 1.3, I can adjust with half a tip of English this way, 0.8, half a tip of English this way, 1.8. If I aim from my fast speed line and do half a tip of English this way, I end up at 0.6 and I end up at 1.6. And from my slow speed adjustment, I can actually adjust this way by half a diamond, through diamond one, and through diamond two, using half a tip of English. But what if you're not off by half a diamond? What if you're only off by 0.2 diamonds? Well, let's demonstrate from three, 1.3, off by 0.2 is 1.1. Hey, 1.1, that's my fast speed line. So you could hit this fast speed, or you could hit this medium speed with two tenths of a tip of English. This is where it starts to become more artistic and you're not actually measuring two tenths of a tip of English. You're just realizing I need a gentle, two tenths, that's just a tiny bit. So you need a tiny bit of English to compensate for being off by a tiny bit of your medium speed line. So I'm just gonna line up straight through and I'm gonna put a very gentle amount of English, medium speed. 
However, don't take this too far and think that if a half a diamond is a half a tip of English, one diamond off is one tip of English. We sort of get a little bit too greedy there. So for example, let me demonstrate from four through 1.75, that's my medium speed line. So if I cheated by a whole diamond, I'd be at 2.75. So theoretically, if this scaled, I could just do a whole tip of English with medium speed. Let me try it, I'm gonna demonstrate, this isn't gonna work, but I'll just show you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna line up from the edge of my tip, I'm gonna slide my other, the other edge over to be where that was. That's one tip of English, medium speed. Not quite. I'm gonna recommend that you stick within that half a tip of English window and less. If you are really in a pinch and you really gotta shorten the angle, you could know if I load up on English, you might be able to make the shot and give it a go if that's the only thing you've got. But if you want a predictable line, try to stick within that half a tip. Now I wanna mention that realistically in live play, it's pretty rare for the cue ball and the object ball to line up in a straight line through one of the diamonds exactly. So you actually end up doing less of a pure calculation work that I'm showing here. And eventually you start learning how to shoot more artistic at some point, you sort of leave this system behind, you have some sort of benchmark reference angles, but you start to internalize how speed and spin affect the object ball. But of course, sometimes the balls are just too steep to adjust with spin or speed. Let me show you, for example, here, if I'm from diamond five, my medium speed is 2.2, my fast speed is 1.9, fast speed with an adjustment is 1.1. No way, you are going to have to cut this ball to go cross corner. And that's gonna produce some new problems. So let me suggest another option that might be a possibility. Once you move out of the dead ball hit window for one bank shot, you might be moving into a dead ball hit for another bank shot. In this case, I've lined up dead for my three rails cross corner. But if you insist on cutting the ball, let me give you one simple parameter to consider. The problem with cutting this ball is when you hit on this side of the ball, it's going to throw the ball up table and it's going to add English on the ball, which is going to throw it even further in two different ways. So we've got to compensate our line of aim by shooting up table a little bit. So I'm going to recommend you find your medium speed line of aim, ignore the cue ball, and just go straight through the object ball. In this case, I've set it up to be somewhat simple. I'm lined up through 1.3. This is through three. That's my medium speed line. And then I'm going to have you cheat in the opposite direction using the speed adjustment. So I'm going to have you cheat to 1.5. So this is where your eye is going to go, but you're still going to shoot medium speed. So now we're gonna figure out how to aim at that spot. Now mentally you can think about where a ghost ball would be and think about if you put it straight up and down. You're gonna think about where the circle would be, right? And you're gonna think about trying to put your tip in that spot on the table. That's where the ghost ball should be. So you're going to pivot and you're gonna to try to aim at that spot with the cue ball. and you're still shooting medium speed even though you're on a slow speed line. Hmm, you can see it was gonna go. Now that problem doesn't happen as much when we do a cut bank shot. So let me show that. So we end up with three through 1.3 again. Now in this case, we're throwing the ball the other direction and adding English the other direction. So we need to cheat the other way. So I'm gonna say, cheat towards your fast speed line for a cut bank shot, in this case 1.1. So mentally you're aiming at 1.1. I'm gonna think about where the ghost ball needs to be. Now I made the ball in the pocket, but I almost scratched in the side. And these two pass shots actually demonstrate some of the reasons I don't like to cut the ball when shooting bank shots. When you're doing a pass over bank shot, you have that high risk of having a double hit. When you do a cut bank shot, you're retaining so much speed as it flies around the table, you might pocket in the side or go a rail and pocket in another corner by accident. Now truthfully, I do shoot my fair share of cut bank shots, but I know when I shoot them, I'm adding a layer of difficulty and a layer of risk that's not involved when I shoot a full hit bank shot. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how to adjust for the concept of rail distance that I showed in my five levels of speed video. For example, when the ball is on the rail somewhere, we know the ball is going to compress the rail even when you shoot at slow speed. So we have to think in terms of our fast speed number. So let's just take a look. We have four through 1.5 fast speed, five through 1.9, that looks about right. So if I shoot this fast speed, it should have a good chance of going in the pocket. 
When I say fast speed, I mean my fast speed number. I actually didn't hit that fast speed, did I? In fact, I could hit this slow speed. Now, if I came out from this angle, I'd have to figure out where that ghost ball would be for fast speed. So when it's on the rail, you're trying to figure out where the ghost ball would be for a fast speed aim. And you don't need to crush it, you can just hit that spot. From this end of the table, we got 10 through 4.9. This is my fast speed line, but since I'm on the rail, I'm guaranteed to compress. I'm gonna shoot this soft and we're still gonna get it to go in. Now a problem opposite to being on the rail is when the object ball is far from the rail. Let me set up my medium speed, 6 through 2.7, but notice I am really far away from the spot here. Now medium speed means the ball is going to slide all the way to the rail, but not compress the rail. But this is so far and the felt is felt, so it's going to eventually wear off its slide and it's going to start rolling, which is going to get that slow speed rail action. Let me demonstrate medium speed here. It's going to run long because it's going to grab slow speed rail action. So if you are far from the rail, you need to sort of up your power, not too much, just a little bit, not a whole power level more, but this would be like medium plus in order for you to get that same sliding action that you're looking for. Now a quick note I forgot to video, follow and draw can transfer spin to the object ball and alter the rail action for a given speed, kind of like rail distance. This is often something to consider when you're trying to get shape for a bank shot. Now theoretically, top will transfer backspin to the object ball, which would shorten the rebound angle. But in live play, I actually find this quite insignificant and I don't even adjust for it. Draw, however, does produce a notable topspin on the ball and can make a medium speed shot rebound with slow speed rail action. This is, of course, for bank shots. Top and draw have much more dramatic effects on kick shots. In the same family of adjustments is how we use this system to kick at a ball in the jaws. So for example, let's say I was on my 7 through 3.2 line. That's my medium speed number. Let's put a ball in the middle. This is how I would bank that shot medium speed. Now keep in mind, if I shoot this bank shot, this is the ball that starts sliding. And so it's got about a foot, foot and a half, maybe a little more to slide. But if I take that out of the middle and I shoot the cue ball medium speed, it's got so much more distance to pick up topspin. So if I shoot this shot, medium speed, it's going to run long. Maybe not that long, but it is going to run long. I still made the ball, but that's not good enough for my taste. I want to make that ball dead if that's what I'm trying to do. So let me line up again, 7 through 3.2. Now I'm going to hit this ball slightly harder than I just did because I know I need to get it to the rail sliding. We can also kick at a ball that's not directly in the jaws. Let's say the ball was up the end rail a little bit and we were trying to kick at that. Let's say we were at diamond five. If we're about a diamond off, we would have to aim about a half a diamond up. So 2.2 would bring us to 1.7. Now mentally you've got to think about where that's going to hit the rail and how that's going to come to about this location. So let me line up a ball to about where that would be. And then I'm going to show this is going to hit around that location. So from five, through 1.7 should cheat by about one diamond because I'm a half a diamond up. Now we can also kick at a ball sort of in this direction. So if it were like a diamond up this way, we'd have to cheat approximately by a half diamond off our medium speed line here. So for example, from five through 2.2, I might line up at five through 2.7. This is approximately going to send us to the first diamond because we're half a diamond adjustment there. We're going to be off by about a diamond here. Now keep in mind, if I actually want to make a ball, I'd have to be something like this. So I'm going to remove this ball because that's where the object ball, sorry, the cue ball should end up. This is a lot harder to actually pocket, but I should be pretty close. Give or take, we'll at least make the hit. And to demonstrate this from further up table, let's put this around diamond one and we'll go from nine through about 4.5 is medium speed. So that means 0.5 up table is five. So we're going to hit around there, medium speed. Pretty good. And if I'm aiming a little further up table, if I add 0.5 to 4.5, I'd be up to actually subtract. I'd be down to four. So I'd be coming into that line with diamond one down here. So nine through diamond four, you can see I'm a little compromised, 
but I still should probably make a good go of this. Yeah, we got it. And let's say I'm still at nine and I'm trying to kick somewhere else, let's say towards diamond three, so we'd be sort of in that trajectory. Let's say I was diamond three, now that's three diamonds off, so I'm gonna have to cut that in half from my medium speed line. So it's gonna be one and a half, half one, so my general kick at that should be around here. Now, obviously, I didn't actually just hit like 30 bank shots in a row. I have my fair share of misses, but of course, I've edited the video to communicate this information in a clear and concise way. But what I really hope you pick up, whether or not you actually follow my track lines and my numbers and memorize that stuff, I hope you start to try to aim your bank shots with spin and speed. It is hard to perfectly combine your aim, your speed, and your spin on every single shot. But if you are starting to practice and notice how spin and speed affect affect a bank shot, you are going to up your bank game considerably. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it at the bottom and subscribe to my channel so you can get updates every time I release a new video as I record all 25 bank shot patterns from my Aim With Speed library. Don't forget also to check me out at poolometry.com where you can get my free Aim With Speed manual and my decimal diamond markers, as well as you can download the shot charts I show in my video.